I'm Nina Harding, Corporate Vice President of Microsoft's America's Global Partner Solutions. At Microsoft, my team is responsible for empowering our partners to unlock more of our customers through real working solutions that meet business needs. I want to welcome you today and thank you for tuning in to Microsoft and Partners Make More Possible video series. Today we're discussing AI and education. I'm here today with Carl Hooker. Carl is an educational consultant and strategist and the author of the book, Learning Evolution, The New Era of AI in the Classroom. Welcome, Carl. Thank you, Nina, so much for having me. Today, I am excited for us to kind of explore a number of topics, but let's just start from the beginning, right? Let's talk about the onboarding of AI tools in education and what we're seeing in this space. What I'm seeing now with AI is we've moved past that phase. We're kind of moving into the, the, the broader reach of AI with teachers where they start seeing it solve problems for them. And it's always interesting because at this point, what I see with teachers and coaches too is a tipping point of where they say, well, why don't we just let AI do everything for us? And I was like, ah, now you're asking the good question because really what's the most important thing about your job? It's about coaching, mentoring, motivating, all of those things that AI cannot do. It just gave you a list. I, I love that conversation that comes up and, the, and just that excitement gets me excited about it. So I still see it happening across the board, teachers across the country. You know, only I think 40% latest number I saw as of early September, 40% of staff and teachers have been trained on any type of AI use across the United States. So we're still, you know, kind of catching up in a lot of ways. Um, so what I'm seeing is is two different processes happening across the country. You know, one is there are those teacher explorers, those trailblazers that go out and they and they pilot test with approval from their tech departments, a couple of different tools. And then what ends up happening is they come back and they kind of report to a group or a committee. We called it a digital learning task force. It's a collection of teachers, librarians, tech leaders. We have a couple of students in there because their voice is important. Um, a couple of parents from the parent community and just talking again about what tools work best for our community and our kids and then making sure those are vetted correctly. And so the teacher needs to be a part of that conversation because if it's tech leaders like myself making the decision, I, I luckily I have a classroom background, but not every tech leader does. So you may say, well, this is the one I want to choose because it's the most secure and it's the best for security, but it may not be the best for learning. So again, finding that balance is so important. And that's why I think teachers need to be a part of that conversation. What, what are some of the things that you're seeing like the school districts doing to prepare users um, and the systems to utilize AI. I harken back to the past, but a lot of those tools in the past, I would always say, well, let the students figure it out, you know, give it to them and get out of the way, kind of, so to speak. This is different in a lot of ways because we also have to be concerned about media literacy and bias and things that are inherent within actual AI tools and platforms. So we're kind of taking it a different approach saying like, let's make sure the adults are kind of well versed in it or at least enough to where they can have a conversation with ai which sounds really weird but it's true you got to have a conversation with it um and then they over when they overcome that kind of fear that they don't have to be coders anymore like wow it's just natural language is all i need yes that's all you need so for me it, it starts at the top you know working with leadership and seeing how are there what are the administrative tasks you as a school leader can can use ai or leverage ai to help you with and i'm not talking about just necessarily writing a very uncomfortable email to a parent. And I think with students, it's the same way when you talk about users, and that's our ultimate goal in education, of course, is the end user, the students, what are we preparing them for? I mean, look at the job market right now. There, it, it, There's not a single field that AI isn't touching in some form or fashion. What are you, what are you seeing as some of the major concerns uh, that people are raising around the data privacy and education? And how can AI actually empower the schools in their security? Yeah, I'm going to take off my teacher hat and I'm going to put on my district tech leader hat now because yeah. yes, AI is helpful in some ways. And in, in fact, it can help a lot with your filtering, like kind of your internet traffic, uh, broadband, all of that and help balance all of that load balancing and all that. However, the one thing I've also noticed is it can also help other people, including the bad actors out there. So for example, um, we'll do a basic example. Phishing is still, by the way, the number one thing that gets most industries and in education, I think is tops on that list still. 92% uh, of recent data, I think is that uh, of our security breaches come because of a email or text phishing. One thing I see that school leaders are doing and tech leaders in this field are doing, there's a lot of programs out there um, that are actually almost meant to kind of try to dupe a teacher. You don't want to get do gotcha with teachers sometimes, but you'll have an email go out and we'll see how many teachers actually click on the link or open it. And then you get some reporting data. And so we're constantly learning. And that's really the goal here. I mean, we're all a learning organization. So teaching our teachers like what to click on, when not to click on it, but then using AI in the back end to help us with that, give us that data quickly. 
What are some of the ways, because it is a little bit of a double-edged sword, right? We're right. increasing some of the defense, but the threats are all over the place. How do we change that culture um, to be a cyber secure culture in general? Yeah, and it's it all comes down to that student data privacy and, and what what's our most near and dear thing in education, and it's the the data that comes from our students. And so again, and, and now that AI has been introduced in a lot of ways, generative AI in terms of using tools where you can just plug information in, you can get these amazing graphs and these amazing PowerPoints just from plugging in the data. The one thing that I still caution people about is like, yes, but if you're putting in actual student data into a tool that you haven't vetted, you don't know where that's going. The one thing I've seen, and you mentioned culture, I think it's getting to be where as a society in general, especially in education, it's everyone's job to really manage this. It's not just the tech leader or the librarian. It falls on every single person in the institution and the organization to make sure that they're checking where they're putting their data and where it's going. But for our, educa our educators themselves, what are maybe like three consistent things that you're seeing on how they're using AI? I think brainstorming is the big one. I've got kids struggling with this one standard that maybe as a state standard that we're going to be tested on. Can you give me some ideas for activities or, or lessons to do around that? So really as a thought partner in that sense, I think where it could potentially really lead to is this word that we've been using in education for years called personalized learning. And I, what I see some educators starting to do is realize that if they leverage AI in a certain way and make it a transparent part of the learning process, um, I think that idea that personalized learning could actually happen. And I think that's the pathway and the potential where we can go as teachers. And I'm starting to see that more and more with teachers. Not all of our students have access to tutors or even a, a parent at home that's able to help them with their assignments. So now you have a tool that can help a little bit with that. It's not going to replace that human connection. I think that's what we always have to mention um, because I, you know, it's important to point that out. But it does give certain students opportunity that maybe they didn't have before, which I think is a great conversation, especially with equity being what it is in schools these days. I just want to thank you so much for your insights and really uh, so happy that you could join us today. I appreciate it, Nina. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, everybody out there. So please be sure to read our companion blog, Microsoft and Partners Make More Possible in Education. Thanks so much for joining us.